Hello, this is Running Robert, and today we're going to be talking about the NFX Life Sciences Corporation AVXL Clinical Update Summary. Today is the 3rd of January, 2024. We got some news on a failed trial, so we are going to be dissecting that trial, kind of looking to where they're going to go from here, and just talk a general summary overall. So I like to do small cap pharma. I like to do games. So if you like what I'm doing, hey, please like and subscribe. It helps a lot, and thank you. Uh, disclaimer is very sadly I do own Anavex shares. Uh, I bought them super cheap, so I've been holding on to them. I'm an amateur investor, and any advice given should be fired up by your own due, due, own due diligence. And any information given is valid for today, the third of January, 2024. And this slideshow will will not be updated as we get new news. New slideshow. Okay, so what happened? So Anavex released its top line data for the phase two, phase three excellence trial, and it was definitely not very excellent. Uh, though showing improvement, both primary endpoints were not statistically significant. There were secondary endpoints that did meet statistical significance, which is helpful, but without the primary, it's not that great. So what does this mean? So without meeting statistical significance, the chances for approval are fairly low. Again, this is a pediatric trial. The adult trial was a success. And for the pediatric part, there are not currently any medications for RET for children. So they could use this data along with the long-term studies uh, and the patients on the compassionate use program to find a way to get approval. I could see a way forward for it. Uh, the, like I said, the trial, it failed. It wasn't terribly off of statistically significance by itself. I'd say this trial is not going anywhere unless they redo it. But based on the circumstances, there is a chance, though low. Why did the trial fail? So. Um, these are three reasons why I believe it, it could have failed. I am not going to put to eat any of these uh, in particular, but these are just kind of the, a, a very splattering of what it could be. So too small a spot to study. So which could mean that the placebo effect can affect the trial more. Now, there were 62 patients on the drug, 30 patients on the placebo. Plus, it looked like there were some dropouts. So the overall total went down to 77 from 92. Uh, if... There is anything else going on there where we've lost those 15 patients. There might be some shenanigans, but we're just going to think that that probably is dropout. So again, if you did have dropout patients in the placebo group, you, again, a couple people might very much affect the trial. And just for your information, the Acedia trial had 187 people in it. So almost double the, the trial for this. It also could be a bad trial design. So in the... Uh, what they released is that AVEX believes to have identified the probable causes. This is, of course, just could be a black mark on AVEX. Uh, if we've been here long enough, we definitely see some clinical trials that really have doomed the drug, even though the drug might have worked, but the trials were just so badly designed that they just failed. And of course, either the drug doesn't work or it works, but not enough for clinical significance. Obviously, I have to throw that in there because anytime you have a trial failure, you will have to address that part. And any addressing in the regulatory discussions will have to look at that. So what now? So Anifex was waiting for the data to start the process for uh, getting approval. This is going to be going off on a rant. It is incoming. I am letting you know. This decision to wait on approval for getting RET, we could have already had a RET adult approval in the works or maybe even had it done. But again, our CEO, who at this point, I, he should not be CEO of this company. I think at this point, there's just so many tick marks against him that you can't say that he's a good CEO. He got us this far, great, but we need to get across the finish line. And he seems just hell bent on making sure that doesn't happen. So again, this decision was incredibly stupid. We should have started with the adult approval and then added on pediatric later. Okay. Rant is over. Let's go on. So most likely they will still file for adult approval with the positive trials and we'll have a discussion with the regulatory groups about the pediatric approval. So again, they'll start with the adult and they'll have to wait on pediatric. Ah, oh, who could have seen that coming? Uh, I do expect the adult filing will occur this year, hopefully, for the love of God. And uh, we will hopefully have more news about what they knew for pediatric during this year too. So Brett's on hold. For at least the pediatric, I expect the adult to go forward. It should be this year. But again, our CEO is just incompetent at this point. So summary, I've already pretty much said this. Just another dumb decision to wait. 
it just doesn't help. So the company does have about three years of cash on hand. They have about 150 million and burn about 50 million a year. So we're good for money. It's not really a cash problem. Uh, and so we're going to have to just wait for the regulatory discussions. Uh, and that's really the next step. Uh, we're also going to be waiting for the Alzheimer peer review journal to come out. Hopefully that will be soon. And of course the Alzheimer OLE study to be completed. That is the open label extension. And so those are kind of what we're waiting for now in 2024. And we'll just see where we end up. Uh, like I said, I'll continue to update it though. This company just makes me extremely frustrated at some point. So I, there's, there's not much you can do. And I'm sure probably a lot of people who invested probably feel the same way. They're like, I can see there's a lot of good, but we just can't get there. So thank you very much for hey, watching and listening. And I hope you have a wonderful day.